Guten Tag. Let's talk about the PN diode and its AC response now. So, this falls within our device category here. We're looking at PN diodes, small signals. We're making progress towards uh, um, understanding transistors and alike. But let's look at the small signal AC response of a diode. If you're a tinkerer, uh, you might recognize this as an antenna. We'll use this as an introduction. Uh, we'll uh, first devise an um, equivalent circuit model with a, a conductance and series resistance, and then we'll deal with the capacitances in this uh, PN diode. All right, as I mentioned, if you're a tinkerer, you might recognize this as a uh, little antenna where you can capture signals. And uh, the way to think about this is that you have this um, diode in series of a vol um, DC voltage. So you have it um, biased in a particular direction. So we always assume we have some DC voltage applied, some V applied. And then we superpose some oscillating signal. And for the treatment that we use here, we'll assume it's a sinusoid. It has a certain amplitude and it's superposed uh, on top of the circuitry. And then we inject um, current in this PN diode. So that's the physical um, picture we have. The, the real implementation of such a thing is sketched here, where this acts sort of as an antenna. This here might be the inductor. And here is the actual diode, which is this tiny little thing here. And obviously, this is a discrete uh, element. Uh, today's circuits have these, uh, obviously, in in a different structure. All right, uh, the equivalent circuit model uh, consists of a, a series resistance and a, uh, a parallel element which has a conductance in it, a junction capacitance, and a diffusion capacitance. And we'll pick up all these circuit elements one by one. So let's get started here on the forward bias conductance. Uh, we have had derived a forward bias current already. Um, that was valid in a variety of areas out here in the forward bias. And we have identified an ideality factor that's listed here as M in the expression in the exponent. Um, if you're diffusion limited, sort of ideal, that factor would be 1. That's the very simple expression. Uh, if you have um, ambipolar behavior or recombination behavior, uh, those factors would be 2. And uh, the slopes are different than what um, uh, the perfect slope of 1 would be. We also had, uh, for high biases, already built in a Fermi level drop, a quasi-Fermi level drop in the supplies in the, um, that are leading up to the junction. So uh, we'll discover that right in here. So now we're just taking the log of this uh, current expression we derived before. Nothing fancy here. We now differentiate this expression with DDI. So we want to get differential circuit elements um, uh, established. And so this expression in here is, is pretty easy, right? So um, if you differentiate a log, you get uh, one over uh, one over the element inside the log, so that's pretty clean. You differentiate here with i, so you uh, get the dv di. The i falls away, so here you go. And um, you pull down out of the exponent the beta and the m. So nothing really fancy going on here. And you can resolve this expression now for um, 1 over i like this. So you bring over the m and the uh, q and the beta. And if you do that, you basically see that you have a um, the conductance term here is this guy. It's the so-called forward bias conductance. You have the series resistance that is in there, which it stems back from up here. Um, and you have an element now that depends on i. So this is now effectively bias dependent. So this i here is depending on where you bias the device to, and then you wiggle uh, the voltage and the current around a bias. Okay, And depending on how, how high you are in the current uh, characteristic, um, you have a different um, forward bias conductance. So, so far, so good. So, um, 
You may or may not remember that from simple circuit elements, but these uh, uh, AC uh, elements are basically superposed on top of a DC uh, bias, and therefore they may be dependent on this overall DC bias. And, the, and obviously the PN diode is a nonlinear element, so that is why these parameters are going to be nonlinear dependent. All right. Now let's look at the reverse bias conductance. Um, in the ideal case, we had already identified that um, out of this expression here, with the complex exponential, minus 1, if you're in a negative bias, you can sort of forget about this exponential, and you end up with a constant. So that's the ideal behavior. But we already also identified that if you have a recombination term, in the expression, if you have recombination in the junction, you basically generate carriers, and therefore uh, you increase the reverse current, and you have this voltage dependence here. Okay. So instead of this conductance being a really uh, constant, you now have a voltage dependent built in here. So now we're going to take the differential with the applied voltage. Obviously, uh, the I disappears and we end up with a term that is 1 over the square root, right? If you differentiate a square root, from you go from exponent 1 half to exponent minus 1 half, so you go as 1 over the square root. This should be all rather familiar to you. And uh, so you, we have now a reverse bias conductance, this guy here, that is, um, again, depending on uh, the bias you have applied. Again, it's a nonlinear element, and you can kind of see that here, this is not a a simple resistor, obviously. All right, so, so far so good. This was pretty simple. We just took the uh, normal expressions we have uh, derived in the previous classes and plugged in uh, the uh, simple differentials to get conductance and series resistance. And uh, again, these uh, two terms are uh, bias dependent and ultimately uh, are nonlinear. Okay. Now let's move to the majority carrier capacitance. That would be one of the two capacitors here that are in series, and it'll become more clear why there's two capacitors, etc. So, now, that'll be in the next section.